but America's still looking dangerous. And it goes in deep, and once again, England stretch, and Ramos takes it back, and it's a goal! Woods comes to it, and it's a goal! Oh. And the substitute has scored for the oh, United man. States. Have gone absolutely crazy here, and I'm sure the whole nation will as well. Get out. I, certainly am, yes. No, no question about that at all. Well, let's talk about the game, Jim. I've answered that, so there's no need to talk about that. Well, I mean, you will know. I'm sorry to labour the point, but you will know that uh, <laughs> labor there, there'll be an avalanche Don't back home now. It. Don't labour it, Jim. I've, told, I've given you the answer, OK? The voice of a man under some pressure after what has to be one of the lowest points in the nation's footballing history, defeat by the USA. But four days can be a long time in football, so welcome to the RFK Stadium here in Washington for England versus Brazil. Joining us is a man who knows a thing or two about football American style, Rodney Marsh. But first, here's Jim Rosenthal with the England captain, David Platt. David Platt, have the England party got that American game out of their systems? Well, without any shadow of doubt, I think there's nothing like another game coming along. You can hear the noise in the background now, something special about an England-Brazil game. Uh, whether it be in Washington, Wembley or in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it looks special, it should be special, it's a nice day for us. It's a little bit cooler than when the Brazils, Brazilians played the Germans the other day and that should benefit us a little bit. Uh, we just have to wait and see, we've got to go out there, we've got to produce a performance and we've got to get the result. Well, he's in positive mood, David, but uh, they're up against the Brazilians who look like they're on their way back to being great stuff again. Yeah, let's hope David Platt's right when he says that. Um, I think it's going to take a yeoman effort today for England to win this game. A game today between two teams with completely contrasting styles, the Brazilian possession game, the English direct game. We'll have to wait and see how this one goes. OK, let's cross now to Ron Atkinson and Brian Moore. Thank you, Matthew. Well, the team's waiting out there to start. Let me just quickly tell you, it's an England team with new cap Tim Flowers of Southampton in goal, Earl Barrett of Villa winning only his second cap, Andy Sinton restored to right back, a side that's desperately looking for a good result, but 11 players with but one international goal between them. That was the one scored by Ian Wright recently in Poland. Brazil, they make uh, two changes from the side that allowed a 3-0 lead over Germany to slip to 3-3. Defender Julio Cesar is out. He lost $50,000 in a burglary at his hotel on Wednesday. And not unnaturally, his mind is not on football. Valbert takes over. And Branco, the free-kick expert who plays down the left, is injured. And Nonato takes his place. Our referee here in Washington today is Helder Diaz of the United States of America. We're just about ready to go. It's just gone uh, five past one here now in the afternoon. A nice, pleasantly warm afternoon here in Washington. Temperature about 72 degrees. It was 94 here on Wednesday afternoon when Brazil and Germany met. So it's much more to the liking of the players here today. Good pitch, good prospects, and a big job ahead now for England. Here's Gary Pallister. Getting it for Des Walker on the far side. Dorigo. Getting it towards Ian Wright. Failed there, though, by the number eight, Luzinho of Brazil. It can't get any worse. Seemed to be the message that Graham Taylor was saying after that humiliation by the United States. Let's just hope he's right here today. But it's an enormous task here against a side, Brazil, that many people are already beginning to install as favourites for the World Cup here in America next summer. England uh, getting a little bit of the early play though, but a delightful bit of play by Jorginho on the far side. Hustled there and then beaten by Lee Sharp, but conceding the free kick. Dunga spreading it wide here to uh, Eddie Velton, one of the newcomers in this Brazilian side. Shorn of so many of their top players still playing in uh, Italy and France and Spain and also in their own country like a dozen or more of players who would have been in contention aren't here. Rai, Dunga, up to Careca, stopped though by Ince. But of course when Brazil need a player, so often they seem to go down to the Copacabana beach in Rio, pick up a player and uh, slot straight into the side. Such an immense amount of talent in that 
football country where the uh, game is such a passion. Alistair. To Dorigo. Back to Des Walker. His confidence has been at a pretty low ebb lately, uh, Walker, but I think Graham uh, Taylor's attitude is exactly right. To get over that, you've got to get out there and start playing. Ince caught on the ball again. Dunga just knocking the ball through towards Kareka. And uh, the first touch in an international jersey for Tim Flowers. There'll be plenty of people on the south coast of England delighted that the Saints goalkeeper gets his first touch. And his first cap. 26 years old, a confident young man. Flowers hits it long. Marcio Santos with the header. Earl Barrett winning his second cap. The first was away in New Zealand. Sinton. A little back heel. Now can Barrett get in there? Dunga. The Brazilians spread it around so brilliantly in the first half against the Germans to go three up. And here's Correca. Pallister stays with him and Pallister does well. Great play there by the Manchester United defender. Gets it up to Clough. Pallister's little touch to Ince. England looking as though they missed business and it's uh, sharp on the far side and he'll get to this one. Right is up in the box as well for England. And it'll be a corner. Ron Atkinson, early uh, thoughts. It's with Dorigo. Apologise, I don't think you seem to be hearing Ron Atkinson there. We'll sort that out for you. Here's Batty. I'll be going on about that for 15, 20 minutes. Out a free kick. Taparel plays for Palmer in Italy. In goal. Up with a free kick, Palace is up there, ball, commanding figure, Sinton in there, busy little player. Not a bad start here for England. Knocked away though, gained by the Brazilian defence, the number 22, Valbert. Donato is off already. Well, oh, the Brazilian's having some problems, he took on... Uh, Franco's place, and number 17, one of the quickest substitutions of all time, Cafu, is on. Junga getting it away again. Here's Walker. And again, Walker. And Junga again, tidying up so many things in that uh, area there. Marcio Santos. Kafu on for Nonata, who suddenly was in he was only a, a last minute change for Branco. Alistair looking happy with his form in these early stages. Kafu to Rai. And number 14, Marcio Santos. Valbert, two central defenders who've never played together before for Brazil. Edebelton. Quick challenging by England, and in no way are the English lads at this moment overawed. They feel they've got an awful lot to prove here, which indeed they have, and here's right now. Brought down right on the edge of the box, no uh, free kick. And Albert gets it away, not very far. Good work there again, this time by Batty. Holding him up for just a little bit. But Ellie Belton coming through the middle now for Brazil, picking up Kareka. Cusinho. It might be a possibility here. Rise there as well. Good work by Tower, by Flowers for England. But where was that marking on the far side? That the Brazilian captain Rai was right through there. England caught out disastrously. And in fact, the Brazilian really didn't get a strong touch on this one. Rai. And enough for Tim Flowers to get down. Hints. Just 
Strong challenge by Paul Ince, but he got away with it on the number seven, Valdir. Lee Sharp. Patty. Dunga, what a great ball there. Flung inch perfect with the outside of the boot. Straight to Cafu. Eddie Belton, hustled by Earl Barrett. Flipped on again by Cafu. Rai. Cafu again. Tarekas in the middle. Lucinos in the middle. Eddie Belton playing it in. Batty getting it away for England. Still nil-nil here in the early stages of the RFK Stadium in Washington. The foul there by the number 14, Marcio Santos, who plays in France for Bordeaux. On Ian Wright. Here's the challenge on Wright. Renato, I understand, has got a hamstring injury. That's why he's gone off. He must have collected that in the first minute of the game. Ian Wright, the only player on the field to have scored an international goal for England. Well, <laughs> it really is a joy not only to see the Brazilian players, but to come and enjoy the Brazilian fans as well. Wonderful. Here's David Batty. Uh, this is just the weather for that sort of dancing. And certainly the Brazilians in that game against uh, Germany, it was a real samba performance by them. Certainly midfield looks a very, very important area today, Brian. Um, you know, Dunga and Ray, very, very effective players for Brazil, and it's very important, I think, that Ince and Batty get hold of those two. The other thing they do, of course, once we win possession at the back, they do leave a lot of, a lot of space for our midfield players to come back and get good possession. Cafu up to Dunga. Valver. Cafu again. A long ball towards... Uh, Ray, stopped by Earl Barrett, Sinton battling away, Brazil are getting possession again, Barrett still battling though. Ella Belton now, little back heel by Correcta, the crowd enjoyed that, but Walker didn't for a moment take his eye off the ball and uh, got the clearance in for England. Free kick to England. Just had two, two experiences there, um, two examples there of uh, Rye breaking through. Earlier he missed a very, very good chance breaking on the back of our defence, but just, just a second ago he broke through off the back of Batty and Ince. And it's all right if you're a midfield player and a, an aggressive, competitive one, just trying to win everything in front of you. But you've also, particularly at this level, you've got to be aware of their midfield player sneaking in at the back of you. They did it very well against Germany, Brazil, and already the signs are that they're trying to do that again. Kareke comes a little bit short, and then they nick through up the back of him. In the meantime, Dorigo on the far side, finding Paul Ince, the England captain. Dorigo again, off his heel, a throw to Brazil. Some of my 50,000 crowd here in the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Stadium in Washington, built in 1961, a super stadium home to the American football team, the Washington Redskins. Something that would uh, make most of our clubs drool at the mouth. Parking for no fewer than 10,000 cars around this stadium and 300 buses. Here's the rhythm being beaten out by the Brazilian crowd here. Correcta chasing this, Hallister taking no chances. Pereca plays in Napoli, 28 goals for Brazil, including one against the USA in the opening game of this tournament. Ince getting the ball through to right, trying to play sharp in on the far side. Jordinho, a wonderful right back on the far side, played in the last two World Cups for Brazil. Dunga, 
what a class act he is through the midfield as well, picking out Cafu Ron. Yeah, this is the area that bothers me a little bit. I think uh, when Andy Sinton was selected, I thought that he'd have been playing more as a right-sided midfield player, working up and down the flank a little bit and giving us a better balance than we've had. At the moment, he looks as if he's getting drawn in and it leaves them a hell of a lot of space, the Brazilians, just to switch play, just to whip it out either to Elvel Elton or uh, even out to Cafu, who's now come on, and it means very often Barrett will find himself 2v1. Alistair's header. Brazilians beginning to get a rhythm together on the field as well as just as much as their players are, their fans are on the terraces. It's uh, an offside and a free kick for England. Thank you, Graham Taylor. Anybody needs a result today? England fans, England players, nobody more so than the England manager. Here's Sinton. Up to Nigel Clough. Certainly we were led to believe, Ron, that Sinton and Sharp would play down the flanks and that Clough would be uh, playing up front with Wright. Yeah, I think what's happening, I think Dunga goes very deep for Brazil and I think very often Batty's a bit inclined to want to chase him in there. Now, you know, that's a position he's just got to be prepared to say Dunga can have it in those areas, but he's got to hold his own position. Well, of all people, uh, there's Walker right up there in a, a strong forward position. A lovely ball played in by Dorigo. That was, though, there's Sharp getting this one back. Out there. Dorigo again. The front of the fair. Never quite seems the same with Brazil playing in anything other than those famous yellow shirts. No, it doesn't, does it? I was thinking psychologically when they came on England, have got one of a little bit. When, when you see those the famous shirts, the famous Brazil strip, well, it, it does look effective. They somehow don't look quite the part, except when they play through balls through the Kareka, then they look the part. to Earl Barrett of Aston Villa. Make the throw. Tell us a bit about Earl Barrett, uh, Ron. Yeah, well, for me, I think it's, it's long overdue his selection um, and he couldn't have had a harder game. Very, very quick. There won't be a fitter player on the field than him and uh, he goes into an England side which, just looking at it, Brian, is probably as inexperienced an England side as I've ever seen. But looking at the back four, possibly the quickest back four I've ever seen England field. I mean, Barris Lightning quick, Dorigo's quick, um, Des Walker, despite what's happened recently, can't have lost that much pace, and Ballister's fairly quick. Well, there's Walker with a header, and Earl Barrett, who won his own. Head of Elton for Brazil. And a jockey position away from Earl Barrett, twisting and turning, eventually brings Cafu into it. Trying to run at Barrett. Elton. In the end, uh, Simpson stuck to him well there. Kareka then gets the ball to uh, Dunga. Now, had that been Branco there, it might have been a different answer, but... Uh, in all fairness, though, Brian, over the years, we've seen him whack a few yeah, good ones in, haven't we, Dunga? That's right. Still playing in Italy, Dunga, with Pescara. But I think this is very, very much a learn... Oh, forget everything that's gone on, all the, the flak that's flying about. This is very, very much a learning experience for most of the England team. You know, if you look at them, people like Ince, Batty, you know, they're going to they're gonna have to see people play one-twos against them and then run off the back of them. You know, and, you know, you can't teach that. They can only get it in the, the heat of battle, which they, I would guess they're going to get plenty of today. Kareka, it's getting warmer all the time. Ince goes in. Can't collect, neither can Wright. Knocked away by Marcio Santos. Lee Sharp, Dorigo's made the break for him. And uh, just failed to get the cross in. Dorigo's been one of the successes of the last few weeks, and they've been uh, few and far between for England, but Giordino is such a man to beat. 
Yeah, we think of him as an attacking fullback, and yet that is a magnificent piece of defending there. Nigel Clough and Lee Sharp. It's Lee Sharp who eventually hits the corner in towards Pallister. In the game by Sinton that time. Marcio Santos getting it away. And suddenly they're on the move again with Valdea. Careca's up there alongside him. Here's Careca. Rise made the break too. Valdea with the shot. Down goes Flowers again. It didn't really test the Southampton goalkeeper. Well, I mean, what a classic example of counter-attacking. One minute we're having a corner, next minute two or three passes and they're attacking the heart of our defence. And as I say, fortunately for, uh, for Young Flowers, well, not for Young Flowers, but for Tim Flowers, he he's had two little situations now that have helped blood him. I mean, on another day against other Brazilian sides, he might have been picking two out the back of his net. Bluff jumping for this one, but beaten in the air by Valbert. getting slightly involved there with Dunga. Free kick's already taken, they don't waste any time. Right, up to Kareka. Well, there's there, but so too is Flowers. One or two ominous touches from the Brazilians I mean, now. Just watching Kareka the other day when he was linking up with his two midfield players in the German game. Seeing tonight, he pushes right up against Pallister, then he checks off. Draws people in and plays a nice little through ball. And Valdea looks as if he's a willing sort of willing sort of player wants to run through. Hints. Tony Dorigo. Play down towards Lee Sharp. Cafu. Cafu again plays for Sao Paulo in Brazil. Out of Elton. Also Sao Paulo. Valbert, another player from Sao Paulo. Here we go. The back heel. The crowd loved that. Walker received it, puts it away in the touch. It'll be a throw to Brazil. Of course, if you want a ray of hope, Brazil haven't beaten England in the last five matches, stretching back to 1981. Including the 2-1, of course, in Rio back in 1984 when uh, John Barnes and Mark Hately were the scorers, and a 1-0 at Wembley in March 1990. Walker. Up to Sinton. Cut out again by Dunga. Eddard Elton. Rye. Little flick on, Rice taking it on, but uh, it was stopped well there by Barrett. Dunga spreading it wide on the far side, Jorginho. It showed too much of that to Lee Sharp. The long ball forward. And Valbert will get there before Ian Wright. See, this is an area, Brian. A few can, can pick the ball up for fun. I mean, we have, we have nobody... Immediately out here to go and even put a challenge on him, and he's always the outman. They'll nil the score with 20 minutes gone between England and Brazil here in the RFK Stadium in Washington, where Brazil now get a free kick. Dunga will take it. Kareka. Challenge there by Inns. Lucky maybe to get away with that, but Batty picks it up. Finds Nigel Clough, tricks Dunga well, but uh, found uh, there was another Brazilian just behind him, Luzinho. Earl Barrett gets it back to Tim Flowers. Dorigo, hits. Action on Sinton by Dunga, a free kick to England. Dorigo. Paul Ince. Sharp hitting a longer cross, but there's no white shirt there. Cafu will pick it up again now for Brazil. Picks it forward to his Sao Paulo teammate. 
Yes, we're going to have to be a bit selective when we get in wide positions crossing the ball because we know natural big man except when Pallister comes up for set plays. We, we're maybe going to have to play, either play our way in there or play shorter crosses to the to the near post. Left a bit of play there actually by uh, Rai. I think he was a little unlucky to concede the free kick there. Still, England will take whatever charity is going. Lee Sharp behind it. Ian Wright in there. Gary Pallister's up again. They obviously feel that uh, Pallister's height might unsettle the Brazilians in the centre of the defence from this sort of situation. Scooped in there again. Taffarel quite easily able to gather it. And hitting a ball straight up to Kareka. Valdir. Kareka. What a player he is, Kareka. Little ball through to uh, Valdir. Once again... England get it away with Andy Sinton. Valdir again. Batty battling. Valdir yet again. Tafu picks it up. Eddie Belton. He's run out of pitch. I think what will have surprised a few of the England players as well. I mean, we, we always associate uh, Brazil with the flary fantasy skills and so forth. But in several tussles, you know, where Ince, Batty, Earl Barrett's had a couple, Palace has had a couple, they, they've probably been a bit surprised by the power and the strength in the Brazilian challenges. It's not something we, we tend to associate with Brazilian sides, but, uh, yeah, they can dig. They can be strong if they have to physically. It's England's throw. Cafu beating Clough in the air. Clough with the throw. Finds Ian Wright. Wright crosses it in, Dunga got that away, and uh, Ian Wright once more, a speculative shot, and finished up as a goal kick to Brazil. Very unlucky on both occasions, nearly found Clough with his first cross from this cross here, he just managed to clear it there, and as you say, an instinct, that's when he's better, when he doesn't have to think, when he just pulls the trigger. I mean, he surely can't believe what happened to him the other night against uh, the USA. On another day, they probably had six, wouldn't right. Dunga. Ellie Belton. Dunga. Come forward again. They look for Kareka. He's always there. But this time, uh, Walker is nicely positioned for England. Kafir coming through there. And on the far side. Well, it was as well for England that Des Walker got in then because a Brazilian was at the far post awaiting the formality of a tap-in. Great run here by Cafu, getting the better of Earl Barrett. And Walker just got it away, a corner for Brazil. Well, if anybody deserves a bit of luck, it's uh, Des Walker, isn't Dead it? Right. On another day, that would have been an OG, the way things have been happening for him. Dead right. Well, England battling on, still holding Brazil at bay, but facing this corner now. Deep one towards Asio Santos, the central defender up from the back. Rosinho, who's gone right back there to fill his place. Up goes Earl Barrett. Here's Andy Sinton, not forward again for Wright. That is in there. Sinton wants the ball, demanding the ball from Wright, but in the end, Kafu comes back again. Eddie Belton. A little flick with the outside of the boot. Rye now, the captain. A little flick with the outside of the boot this time. To Luzinho. Rise up there again. My goodness, he motors up and down that uh, middle area. Luzinho with the cross. Pereira looking to get it in. And Belton into the side netting quite tamely. And the goal kick. They certainly are impressive, though, when they when they break from midfield. Well, Rai is the one that I find so impressive of all at the moment, the captain, uh, number 21. Well, he's a big, powerful fellow, isn't he? He gets up and down the field, always looking, always looking for possession, and never afraid once he drops a ball off to somebody to, to just charge forward. And also gets the, uh, the responsibility of defending, isn't he, Marking Pallister on set plays. 
great family history as well. He's the younger brother of uh, Socrates, of course, who was a great Brazilian World Cup star. Stunga. Careca. Here's Rai on the ball again now. <laughs> Flicking it through. Jorginho, the attacking fullback. But nothing came of that one. It's Dunga. England have pulled everybody back. Dunga to Ellie Belton. Tattoo going through. Flowers again. Spotting it quickly. Getting out just as quickly. Just thinking, looking at some of these passes inside our fullbacks. There's Bobby Keach behind us. There's Rodney Marsh in the studio. I bet they think Johnny Haynes is back behind. <laughs> I thought that sort of passing had uh, gone out of the game. Yeah, he was the fullback. master of that sort of pass. Here's Pallister. Temperature's gone up on the big scoreboard to 74 degrees. There's no shade here. go. Yes. Tony Barriga again. Okay. Yes. Ball in. Catherell called for it. One thing I will say, Ron, is that uh, having looked at the debacle in Norway and uh, the game against the USA, which in many ways is a fairly spiritless performance, there's a lot more spirit about England here. Whether the Brazilians are just bringing the best out of their competitive nature or not, I don't know. But uh, it's a different looking England side in terms of the spirit and the battling that's going on. Well, <laughs> not quite like that. That's where they've got to be very careful. They, you know, it's all right being tenacious, it's all right tackling. Let's see what happens here with Roy. Plays in, follows his pass. Carreca. Locked in again, easy for Flowers and Jordinho. Do you feel though there's a slight uh, change of attitude with England? Yeah, and plus the fact they're in a situation which they're not normally, you know, haven't been in for a few weeks, England. They're in a position of uh, not many people expect them to get a good result. Um, you know, it's like not quite lambs to the slaughter, but people are expecting them to get a good, good hiding today. So in a way, they've got nothing to lose. While well, Wright's coming in and looking for something to win, was he pulled down there? And the referee has run straight to the spot and in fact has given a free kick to Brazil. A few boos from the English fans here. Let's have a look at this again, Ron. That will be encouragement for Ian Wright. It was a foul. He got his arm across yeah. uh, the defender's uh, throat. But the, the encouraging thing was how much uh, ground he made upon him, Ian Wright. I mean, whatever else, they are tremendous in midfield, got great invention up front of the Brazilians, but they're not, particularly because of the way they play, they're not the greatest defenders in the world, they take risks at the back. Great play there, though, by Cafu. Cafu again, he picked up Carreca well, Jordinho's on the far side there, Dorigo switched beautifully, readjusted himself perfectly to get away from the Brazilian number two, and concede the throw. I mean, Cafu came on, we understood as a straight replacement for Nanata as a left full-back, albeit an attacking one. At the moment, he's playing every position on the field. And very effective he is too. Rosinho knocking the ball through for Rai. Flipped away again by the English defence. A few hearts in a few mouths there, wondering whether there might have been a trip there on uh, Rai. Here he is, number 21. Looked a good challenge to me, actually. Looked an yep. excellent challenge. Pallister's made two very good challenges in the penalty box. But, of course, when people run at you with pace, there is always that uh, little, little thought in your mind that they may just take a tumble. Here's Dunga again for Brazil, playing in the blue shirts. Cafu, faced by Andy Sinton, a little chip by him. Earl Barrett with a header. And with a clearance. Mario Santos leading right in the air, but here's Sinton, who looks in lively form this afternoon, getting down this flank. That's where I'd like to see him play more, Brian. I'd like to see him push on virtually to Kefu and pull the other two midfield players over, Batty and Ince. Batty, Clough's in the middle, Wright's in the middle. Let Sinton find them, they get a corner off Kefu. So Panis will be forward again. I just wonder whether it's worth sharp teasing one under the bar here. Watching Tafarel the other day, he, did look, he didn't look the best in the world at decision-making, did he? I mean, two or three of the German goals, I wouldn't have think the Brazilian coach would have been happy with. And I would have Particularly put them, the last one. Yeah, I'd have put a lot of those down to the goalkeeper. And sharp. 
over this corner for England. It'll be an out swinger from Clough. In fact, it comes straight off Ellie Belton for another one. 22 years old, seven caps for his country. Really one of the bright young hopes down that left flank is uh, Ellie Belton. Uh, this time it'll swing in from uh, Lee Sharp. Marcio Santos gets it away. And again, Marcio Santos. Gets it up to Jordinho. Oh, that on that side. Foul on it. And uh, number 14, Marcio Santos. Gets the yellow card. And a free kick to England. Tony Garrigo to David Batty. Lee Sharp on the far side. Cusinho made the most of a very limited amount of space on that far touchline. The long ball coming over here towards Ellie Velton and a throw to England. Sun blazing down really brightly here now in Washington in uh, mid-afternoon. Something like 20 to 2 in the afternoon here. by local people that it is this sort of weather you're expecting Washington about this time it really is one of those days there's Batty oh goodness well, Marcio uh, Santos scooped in for that one missed it completely uh, Earl Barrett wasn't far away from it Sinton was in there as well Zinho. Capu. Dunga. Brazilians claim that the pitch was very hard indeed when they played the Germans here on Wednesday and they most of them finished up with blisters. Jordinho hitting it long towards Kareka. Couldn't quite get a hold of that one though. Barrett certainly got hold of that one to throw it into touch. That's where I think England will find him a big help, defending when the ball's coming from the opposite side. He'll tuck on the, he'll tuck on the back of Pallister and he'll win his, more than his fair share of headers. That's his great strength, Brian, defending. Just saw a shot of Graham Taylor. Would he be reasonably satisfied so far with uh, the way things have gone for England at nil-nil? Yes, they've been stretched on several occasions, you know, and they've ridden the luck. I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing in his favour. He probably thinks, well, I wonder if it could be our day today. No, on another day, Brazil might have scored two goals. Not a very good corner. Straight into the side netting. One thing I think we've got to say, and I suppose that's always the same, isn't it, when you see a Brazilian side play, particularly under good conditions like this, you always get what we call a bright game. I mean, the game certainly is lively enough, and uh, whatever else the England boys may or may not have done in recent weeks, they're putting enough in today. And it's a very inexperienced England side who will, I would guess, should learn an awful lot from this game. That's Barrett. Club turning, but there's a foul on... Uh... Capo, I think it was. Junga. Good swift challenge there by Hicks. In the end, it was a foul. He uh, tried to get it for the second time. Free kick to Brazil. Yes, big responsibility on Paul Ince. You know, very, very, uh, very few international caps, and yet they're placing a lot on him now. 
what he's done for me very well today that he perhaps hasn't done so much in the other internationals. He's been prepared, Brian, to accept it of his own back four and then turn and look forward. Pareka shot, knocked away again by the head of Gary Pallister. Nice little touch there from Nigel Clough. It's Andy Sinton, the long ball again towards Ian Wright. He's got some explosive pace to him, as we know well enough. Rosinho just flicking it wide. Out here. Oh, even Ella Belton won't get to that one. It's a pity he couldn't have been a little bit more clinical then, wasn't it, Ian Wright? Accepted it well turned. And Clough had been in a very, very good situation and didn't quite measure his pass into his run. Dorigo. Batty. Sharp. Batty. Good touch by Dorigo. Can Sharp get the cross in? Wright is waiting for him if he can. But so too was uh, Marcio Santos. And it's another corner for England. That's a good little pocket of football, though, isn't it? Good combination play between Dorigo and Sharp. Seven minutes to half time, and still England are holding to nil nil here against Brazil in Washington. England's corner. Lee Sharp with it. And Pallister got the header, but it was away above the Brazilian bar. Actually, Brian, he looked there, you know, if he, he looks as if he got well up above Ryan and went for a straight header at goal where he may have just been better to let the thing just fall back into the box. Maybe relying on somebody like Ian Wright. If you look here, he tries to twist when he's up there. He's got up to a great height. Mm. And maybe there he might just have been better just to felt it back across the box and see if Ian Wright or somebody could have got a second knock on it. In the meantime, Dunga. Up to Valdir. Well stopped again by uh, Pallister. And Barrett gets it back to Flowers. Wright getting in quickly. Love. Sinton. Pallister. And now Barrett. Nobody there in a white shirt. No, I mean, that's, that's another thing. That's part of Earl's game that we think he's improved this season. Normally he's prepared to just play short, play, play passes to people who we say are, are probably better at, equipped to use the ball than he is. Cafu. Well, by this time on uh, Wednesday afternoon, the Brazilians were three up against uh, the world champions Germany. They certainly haven't got anywhere near that today against uh, Graham Taylor's men. Nil-nil with uh, five minutes to go to the interval. Here's Sinton. Pallister. Batty. Now Des Walker. And now Dorigo. That's a good one. That's the sort of thing we, we've been missing lately. Just play our way out of trouble, change the picture, put another pass in. And then Clough coming off his man and finding Ince with a nicely uh, measured ball. Here's Barrett linking up with the attack. And England have now strung together about nine or ten passes. The cross comes in on the far side. Brazil will get it away, though. Valdir with the header. But I would see far more encouragement with us playing like that. I mean, I think that is the way, if we're going to have any chance at international football, we've got to be prepared to say, this is the ball, we don't give it away. Batty oh. just lifting it through this time. Cafu with a header clear for Brazil. Eli Belton knocking it forward. Towards Kareka. Here's Kareka, rather, Rai. And now Dunga. Jordinho on the far side. Jorginho forward to Valdir. Junga. Rai. Luzinho. Picking the pace up again. But again, Alistair did so well there. The English defensive door snapped shut very quickly indeed. Which 
it needed to do because they do quicken the pace up around the box so often and uh, here they are again now Luzinho finding Cafu looking for a cross there on the far side is Rai and also Jorginho Carrigo did well picks up for Nigel Clough Three minutes of the interval, still nil-nil. Given away there by Nigel Clough. Here's Dunga. Capu. Ellie Belton. Well, that was a fairly aimless ball played in the box there by Ellie Belton. Gives England the goal kick. I know he can sound, he can't, it sounds a little bit dangerous to say so, but you just get the thought that uh, maybe the Brazilian boys are starting to lose a little bit of their belief. I mean, early on, at the start of the game, they were brilliant. Bright, snappy, passing, moving and so forth. But just recent, just in the last few minutes, England have established a, a grip in the game, and then they're not quite anywhere near as comfortable now. I actually think if we've got a little bit more firepower up front, somebody to support Ian Wright, we might just give them a lot more problems. Like Paul Merson, maybe? Well, yes. I mean, I wouldn't be averse to somebody like Teddy Sheringham having a or crack Teddy alongside Sheringham, the, the Ian Wright. I mean, you know, when the Germans threw an extra striker on the other night, he gave their defenders all sorts of problems. Yes, Riedler made all the difference in, the, in that second half. Somebody just to hold the ball up for us and give midfield players a chance to support. Here's Jorginho. Carita. Matty watching it like a hawk though. Dunga, Cusinho, here they come again. Dunga. And again Dunga. So much activity off the ball among the Brazilians there in and around that English penalty area. But uh, Barrett doing well again and uh, so much for the corner flag. And a goal kick. So I would think the England uh, bench so far, it would be a question of so far, so good. Barras with a kick. It's a great sight, this beautiful stadium filled, something like 50,000 capacity. Walker get underneath this one. Barrett gets it away. It's Dunga. Up to Rai. Cusinho's made a little break for him. Carreca's in there as well. Charged down by Pallister. Rai takes it up again for Brazil. Luzinho tries to flip it through again. And a good piece of play that time. Knocking it back. Paul Ince getting it back to Tim Flowers with a flying header. Two tremendous pieces of defending from the Manchester United midfield players. First of all, Lee Sharp when he tracked uh, the number eight, Lucinho's running, and then Ince with that little bit of clearing up header. But those are the sort of things you've got to have, you've got to do when a team's got you at stretch. You've got to do the, the little basics and stick at the game all the while. I made it on at the end of the first 45 minutes. And the message certainly at the moment is it's a, a much improved England performance here against Brazil. It's getting a ball through to Wright. Jorginho with a header but concedes the corner. Ian Wright gives you the impression he fancies it, doesn't he? He's very, very lively today. And he's, he's doing an awful lot of work, not only when he's chasing after through passes, but when he's, he's doing a lot of work from a defensive point of view as well. Well, let's see if we can uh, wrap up this first half with something spectacular right on the whistle now. Pallister's gone forward. Ince is in there as well. Here's the corner coming in. Pallister, in fact, and Sinton. Pallister, in fact, completely missed the header. Whether he was jockeyed off the ball or not, I don't know. But you get the feeling also that Andy Sinton might have done a little better than that. Half-time whistle. And indeed, not at all a bad first half by England, holding Brazil here in the stadium in Washington. Nil-nil at half-time. That's the story from the United States. He's going to lock it!
Welcome back to Washington. We said at the start of this program that four days could be a long time in football. Never mind four days. What about 45 minutes? Rodney Marsh, that's a different side out there. Well, it's a much better performance today than it was against America. And uh, certainly there's a better attitude amongst the players, I think. I think defensively we've played very, very well. And Walker and Pallister together in the middle of the defence have been quite, quite excellent. Well, from the opening moments, it was a different team. I mean, Pallister's tackle right in the first couple of minutes was brilliant, wasn't it? Well, it was important as well, was it? Because as the ball comes through the middle, um, I think it's Ray who goes in on goal, and Pallister times his tackle brilliantly. He goes down, slides down, wins the ball, Bobby Moore fashion. <laughs> Could have easily given away a penalty on another day, but uh, I think that was an important early tackle, yeah and almost throw it away, they're up the other end of the field. But Rye again was foiled by Tim Flowers, again early in the game, great first save for the keeper. That's right, Rye is certainly a great player, isn't he? He gets into some wonderful positions. He would have done better, he'd like to have done better there. But a very important save for Flowers on his debut, yeah. And he's done very well, Flowers. He's done well, and Des Walker, a man who had something of a confidence crisis, appears to have got it back. Graham Taylor said that he wanted to play Walker to give him more confidence. Um, Walker's done excellently in the first half, I think. And on a, on a bad day, this would have been an own goal. And uh, good luck to Walker. Well played. Well played, Des Walker. But it is only 45 minutes, Rodney. Yeah. I mean, are we, are we going to do it? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things I, I want to mention. Firstly, if Brazil has a weakness, it's in goal. Tafarel is not a very good goalkeeper. We've put no pressure on him whatsoever. I'd like to see some in-swinging corners in the second half. Uh, the other thing is, is right on his own up front, is, is, he needs help, and I would like to see, uh, as the boy said in the booth, either Sheringham, um, maybe Merson, to play alongside right in the second half. We shall see. A brief answer, Rod. What odds of uh, us getting a result here? Well, the thing is, is that you, you find it hard to see how England's going to score a goal. But having said that, um, with, my, with my heart and not my head, I say England 1-0. OK, I hope so. Rodney, thank you very much. Let me just give you details of the winner of our third American Airlines competition. Uh, the winner is Mr John Slattery of Western Supermare, and he wins a VIP trip for two to England's next game in this tournament. That's the one against Germany in Detroit, and he gets that prize because he correctly told us that Jeff Hurst scored the opening goal in England's 1966 World Cup victory. We could be on for another victory here, you never know. We'll see you in a couple of moments. Welcome back to the RFK Stadium here in Washington where the half-time score is England nil, Brazil nil. And that's a scoreline I think might surprise a few people back home, Rodney. Well, after the game against USA, you wouldn't have thought that England would be 0-0 at half-time in this game, but they've done very, very well. What's the difference, Ben? Is it because they're playing a footballing side or has somebody had a word with someone and put them straight? Quite frankly, it seems to me as though they're playing with a lot more confidence. I've got no idea why. Um, maybe they feel this is, you know, there's no pressure on them anymore, but uh, they certainly are playing with a lot of confidence. Certain people back home have said we've got nothing to learn from Brazil. Do you still think that's the case? Well, Charlie Hughes, the director of coaching for the FA, said that we have nothing to lose from, from uh, nothing to learn from Brazil. But um, today, I think we're playing. You know, a lot of possessions are Brazilians. Let's let's make that point. They have a lot of possession, but they haven't played through us. And um, Flowers in goal has done well, and Pallister and Walker have done great as well. So at the moment, Charlie Hughes is probably right. <laughs> Players like uh, Ian Wright are avowed Brazil fans. Do you think they're being inspired by playing their heroes? Well, I think every time you play against, in my opinion, the best team in the world, you know, Germany would probably argue with that. Every time you play against a great team, you want to raise your game. And certainly the English player seems to have done that. What would you be saying to the players if you were Graham Taylor now, apart from thanks very much, lads? Well, I think that we need to put more pressure on Tafarel, the goalkeeper. And I'd like to see, on set ball situations, I'd like to see the ball being swung into him rather than away from him because the Brazilians are collapsing on him to protect him. And I want to see him under pressure. Well, the news uh, from the bench is that David Platt is back out for this second half. Yeah. 
Well, David, um, before the game, was very confident about the game. Maybe David Platt, who seems to be our one person to score goals recently, uh, maybe David Platt will add that dimension that we need. And the man to go off is Batty. Yeah, that's it. I tell you, that's a great move by Graham Saylor. I, you know, we've, we've just learned that. That's a real positive move by Graham, and I hope that, uh, that uh, Platt comes through and scores a goal for us. Well, let's see if England can improve upon a very positive first-half performance. Here's Brian Moore. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Well, uh, Tigron, they've put uh, David Platt on. Yeah, well, obviously we don't know whether Batty's injured or what, but uh, it's a positive step. Um, and you just look at them, we were wondering how, how, they could, how we could break the Brazilians down. That might be a way. Well, we are away starting this second half. Brazil attacking the goal to our right. They'll nil the score. That might just be the sort of character to get through those midfield areas to give right the sort of support you, uh, support you were talking about before half-time, Ron. Yeah, plus the fact the other thing is, of course, I could see him dovetailing a little bit with Clough. I'm just wondering whether Clough might pull off the game a little bit more and allow Platt to go through. But also, of course, Brian, he gives us at least more than one goal in our team. Absolutely. Brian knocking it forwards. Jorginho. He's gone round uh, sharp, but not round Arrigo. He's packed 18 goals. I think he scored in his uh, 40 caps for England. So we've upped the strike rate a little bit amongst the team. So England now defending from this corner. Jorginho. A long, long cross in. And Pallister just knocking it on. Crossed in once again. Flowers comfortably catching. Drums are really beating out of rhythm here now. But, uh, as yet, we haven't found the irresistible Brazilian rhythm on the field. Right going for this one. Along with Valbert, but it's a free kick to England. He'll be encouraged, Ian Wright, by the fact that the Brazilian fullbacks push on and leave a little bit of space, or quite a bit of space, behind them. And that's it. those are areas he loves to run into. Up comes Pallister again. Platt is in there. Wright is in there. Looks as though Clough might be the one coming across to take it. Graham Taylor on the bench looking now to see whether England can get this vital breakthrough early in the second half. Still nil-nil. Clough dipping it in. Knocked back again by Pallister. And then put out eventually by Marcio Santos for another England corner. Lee Sharp will take this one. He's knocked it wide to Sinton. There's Sinton's cross coming in. And England has scored, and it's David Platt. How about that for a substitution? Tafferell is beaten, and England have scored this opening goal. Yes, yeah, some good quick thinking by Sharp there. Instead of loading the obvious corner in, everybody was expecting. Plays the ball back to Sinton. Sinton just flights the ball into the mixer there. Platt doing what he is good, gets good leverage there. Gets a, gets a decent header on him, but oh, oh, the goalie thinks that one's going wide. Tafferell. But, uh, you know, isn't it about time England had a little bit of luck? I mean, it's a decent header, but I think the getting surprise is the biggest element for Tafferell there. Jorginho now for Brazil. Couldn't quite get to that one. And here's Flowers. What an, what an excellent uh, tactical substitution for a man who's been beleaguered and under so much pressure, Graham Taylor. That was a winning well, goal. I just wonder what the headlines might be tomorrow. I wonder. Do you think possibly a little bit of humble pie might be eaten? I don't know. But there's a long way to go. Valdir. Ricochet there for Dorigo. Little touch there by Wright. Sinton picking it up. And suddenly the break is on again. What about the pace of Wright here? Valbert is chasing him. Wright has got the greater strength. But not there. That's a foul though. And 
Sinton wasn't terribly happy either with the uh, work of Jorginho and uh, Queen's Park Rangers man and Jorginho having a little square up there. It'll be a free kick to England and Graham Taylor. A little measure of satisfaction in the look on his face with his side a goal up against Brazil. So, another situation possibly for England to exploit here. Clough, but behind for the goal kick. So David Blatt's 47th minute goal, putting England into the lead. Jorginho, right. Now, can England hold it on to this precious one-goal lead? And if open, the ball out of play and a throw to England. It'll be interesting as well to see how the Brazilians stay the distance, Brian. I mean, they had that very, very hard game in, uh, on Thursday, wasn't it, against, uh, against Germany in very, very trying conditions. And it does seem an apparent... Uh, does seem an apparent sort of tiredness creeping into them. They're certainly nowhere near as zippy as they were in the early part of the game. Hang on, Soro. Alcio Santos gets it up to Valdir. The Tillians leave here tomorrow to start next weekend, the South American Championships, and then next month they begin their World Cup qualifiers. Same group as uh, Ecuador, Bolivia, Venezuela, and Uruguay. And they'll not want to go into those games with the psychological damage that a defeat here against England might do. Alistair, England leading. You just joined us. Thrillingly by one goal to nil. Scorer David Platt scored two minutes after half time. Sinton playing it forward to Platt. I think a lot of people were surprised to see Platt on the field. He had this foot injury, and uh, certainly uh, at the news conferences yesterday, the suggestion was that he had have no chance of playing in uh, today's game. What did he do in the warm-up, Brian? No, I, said, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. when he was warming he up. He was warming up well enough, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, but he warmed up alone in any case. He wasn't with the rest of the players when he warmed up, and I thought, well, maybe they're saving him for next week against uh, the Germans, but uh, he's on and he scored. Marcio Santos gets it away, it plants it back again. Certainly the test has brought, uh, you know, the size of the game, Brazil, all the, all the hype that goes with Brazil, certainly brought a hell of a lot out of Pallister. Yeah. But I think he's having an immense game. And also Ian Wright. I think this is probably Ian Wright's best game for England. His movement, his, his unselfish running has been brilliant. And if anybody deserves to finish with a goal, it will be him. I think the Brazilians will shortly be bringing on a sub. Alinha, number 20. Dariga with the throw. Here's David Platt, goal scorer for England. Buff getting in. Dunga with the header. Valde ear. The foul's been given. A free kick to Brazil. In this may they might uh, have wanted uh, the likes of Branca, who's probably the best free kick expert around. But instead of that, it looks like it'll be Jorginho. Lifting it in. Carreco almost got in there first, but Walker was shadowing him very well indeed. I think that's been a few years since you saw Brazil have a free kick within 30 yards of goal and somebody not have an absolute whack at it, isn't it? Here's the goal again, Ron. Yes, there we see. It's, it's, a, it's a good ball in from Sinton. And he's left very, very well. He's placed it, you know, the, the, the keeper really. It's a nice placement, really, but it, it wasn't travelling with a great deal of force. And I think the key, keeper would have thought that's probably going in past the post. But who cares so long as they go in for us? Jorginho. Yeah. 
There we go. Jorginho again, switching it to the far side of the field. Elevelto, uh, Elevelton's there, and Cafu. Here's Cafu. Elevelton. Deflected away from an English player. And just flicked over, bounced over Rai. Safely for Tim Flowers. Center. Flat. Ince, a long way back. No risks to be taken. Flowers. Quickly forward again towards Ian Wright. I don't know whether he got a touch on that head. It's a defender's header. They're going to make a substitution. Luzinho's coming off for Brazil. And the number 20 is Palinha from the Sao Paulo club. But a good goal-scoring record for that club as well. So we can add a little bit of firepower alongside Kareka for Brazil now. And uh, big kick there to Brazil. And I think uh, it's going to be a yellow card for Tony Garrigo for the challenge. Didn't reach Dunga though. Asio Santos. It's the first touch for Paulinha. Bluff. Lovely little ball there. Played for Platt. Tried to reverse the ball now towards uh, Ian Wright. Didn't quite get to him though. Dunga got there first. Right. Paulinha didn't pick it up either. Platt battling away there and he's conceded a free kick and the Brazilians take it so quickly. Get on with the game. And another free kick. Out of Elton. Kapu getting that byline. Kareka's in there too, and he could have played a short ball to Kareka, and there were two or three English defenders in the six yard area lining up to get that one clear. Throw to Brazil. England leading by a goal to nil. Kafu with a throw. Out of Elton. Rai, the captain. Valbert. And England again battling well. There's a foul on Ian Wright, another free kick to England. Brazilian manager in the centre there, Carlos Alberto Pereira, took Kuwait to the 1982 uh, World Cup, being the Brazilian manager since October 92. Ince hitting it forward. England throw. Strong challenge by Jorginho on Lee Sharp. Ince trying to get the ball back from right. Gets it across. They did so well there, Ince. And an excellent piece of defending too by Marcio Santos. But a real quick fire bit of play by England on the edge of that uh, Brazilian penalty area. Gaining in confidence as the minutes go by and still leading by a goal to nil. Sharp at the corner. Not a very good one. Dugger only uh, half gets it away, though. And it'll be a goal kick. It was Paul Ince who went in, getting through a lot of work through those midfield areas at the moment. Particularly this stage of the game, when maybe we're, going, we're trying to hold the fort a little bit, and it's down to him to steady it. Um, but some of the stuff I've seen from England today has been as good as I've seen for a long time. We've been patient. We haven't chased the game. When they've got the ball, we've retreated to the halfway line and said, all right, come on, we'll make it difficult for you. And when we've got it, We've, you know, we've been prepared to put passes in and try, try and build our way through. Ince up to right. Knocking it wide here for Lee Sharp. 
I wonder whether the very fact that we haven't got, say, a recognised big man up front sort of takes that option away and says, all right, we have to play and try and play either along the ground or down the sides for right to run onto. Dunga playing it wide. Cafu. Marcio Santos. Alinea. Right. Alinea. Foul this time by Paul Ince, who claims it was a dive. Referee won't have any of it. The free kick's already taken. Valdez in there now with a great chance for Brazil. And good work by Tim Flowers. Valdez throws his eyes to the sky. He thought he'd got the equaliser there. And there's still work to be done for England. The ball crossed in again. Jorginho has got a powerful shot on him. Knocks it in this time and Ince quite comfortably gets it away. Well, I think that was great justice for England and full marks to Tim Flowers, that won't have done his confidence any harm. But they actually took that free kick, uh, Wright took the free kick from about five yards ahead of where the referee had indicated. That's where Valdir takes it, gets us by surprise here. But as he's going there, you fancy him to screw this one in. And full marks to Flowers, he's gone down but he's still kept his eye on the ball. And you know when you're a manager, when Graham Taylor's been through what he's been through, he might just be looking at those things and thinking, hey, it could very, very well be our day. Their best chances they haven't tucked away, and we've been not gifted a goal, but we've been helped with a goal. Well, goodness knows Graham Taylor deserves one of those days and needs one of those days. I think what's also helped England scores as well today is because the Brazilians have had probably more of the game and have come forward a lot more and left spaces for us to play into. See, they're wrapping away there. Rye wanted uh, far too much time on it, much more than England were going to allow him. Sinter getting the ball through. Now Lee Sharp. But Jorginho was back quickly with the challenge. Sharp wanted just a little too much time there. And it's England's throw. Sinter, who's been a success so far for England today. Here he is again. There's his little chip coming in. This time, uh, Caffarel was equal to it. A little throw out to Cafu. And it melted up ahead of them. England still leading by a goal to nil. Valdez waiting. Careca, the dangerous number nine. He's in there too. Right, who gets up and down this midfield area. Alinho with a little stick in there, but it was Ince who got it away. Great pity there, Lee Sharp couldn't have just taken that one out of his feet, couldn't he? He tried to stop it and... Uh get his shot in. If he'd have just taken it out of his feet a little bit, he'd have eliminated Georgina. As a conga started around the ground with people carrying flags. Jorginho. Yeah. And away comes Black. England break it up well. They've got four up. They've got right away on this side. If anybody will find him, it'll be Nigel Clough, and he does. Right plays it back to him. Clough going on, taking them on. Looking now for David Platt. Nobody out there. But Brazil coming back again on the counter attack. Malinia, well stopped by Des Walker, and Walker comes forward for England, it's really opening up now, Clough for England. Played on by Sharp, here's Wright. Dorigo. And Wright fell right in front of the referee, the referee decreed that it was an accident between him and Valbert. And uh, Taylor having a very strong word there with Carlton Palmer. Looks as though Carlton's coming on. Yes, I just wonder whether he'll drop Nigel Clough off now and uh, maybe ask David Platt to play in a sort of semi-position between the uh, between the front and uh, the back. I'll tell you what's happened. Number, number 20, the, the substitutes come on. Uh, Alinho. Alinho. And he's playing in a little position just off our two centre-halves. And he... Being a little bit of a nuisance to them. It's a position that's very hard for somebody to pick up. Well, here's Rye for Brazil. Sharp will pick this one up and do well. Surging forward now for England, but stopped by Dunga. 
Sharp still in possession and really didn't give Platt a chance to get that one. Palinha coming up now for Brazil in this dangerous position. Valdir, Eddie Elton, but Pallister there again for England. Sinton chasing after this one, gets to it first. England slow. I can only think that's what he must be doing, Brian. He, you know, reinforces midfield and maybe get Palmer to look after it. Uh, the sub their substitutes are a bit quicker. So they're, uh, as I'm saying, still beating out this rhythm, but it's not at the moment the uh, rhythm of victory. Alistair, back to Flowers. It's it long towards Ian Wright. Not it back though by Marcia Santos. gone. And it's still leading by a goal to nil. Walker chasing, getting the better of uh, Kareka. And Walker and Kareka would have met this season in Italy. Walker for Sampdoria, Kareka for Napoli. Right. I think Paul Ince might be coming off, and the Palmer might be taking his place. Flats, scorer of England's goal, hitting it off, testing the pace of right. Tafarel's come out there. Good header by the goalkeeper. Barrett, battling away, conceding the free kick though. Brazil are going to make another substitution as well. It's Jorginho. Rai. Back to Rai again. Cross coming in. And that's easy again for Flowers. There was a foul by Kareka, which gives England the free kick, which gives the chance for the substitutions to make. It's Paul Ince coming off for England and Carlton Palmer coming on. And uh, Valdir coming off for Brazil, with Almir coming on for him. I can only think from the England point of view, Ince must have, must have suffered a, an injury or something or had a knock. Because in this second half he's been superb. Unless the manager thinks that he's played an awful lot, you know, in these, these last few games. But he has, had a, he has had a smashing game, Ince. So a terrific game for Paul Ince. Leaves the field with England leading by a goal to nil to be replaced by Carlton Palmer who slips straight into that midfield position. A Jorginho for Brazil. Halfway through the second half now. Almir. Jorginho. That's done again towards Kareka, played back. Oh my goodness, that was a problem just for a moment for Flowers when Pallister played it back to him. Jorginho, Dunga, Cafu, Alinos, and in the game, get it away through Clough. Valbert. Jorginho. Oh, Sharp, I thought for a moment, had given him the chance to go through there, but Sharp was equal to it in the end. You understand Paul Ince has got a calf strain. England 1, Brazil 0, David Platt, 47 minutes. Certainly it's a scoreline that nobody truly expected, but can England just hold on now for another 21 minutes? score a victory that would do so much for their confidence and the stability of the whole squad. Now the referee suggesting that that was a foul by Earl Barrett. Another free kick to Brazil. They do like to get on with them, take them quickly. you got to keep your wits about you all the time now. And it's a, a 
need for 100% concentration now for England. Giorgino tries to play it in. Carlton Palmer with those long legs of his got across there and put it away into touch. Giorgino with the throw. Balbert. All right. Balbert. This time it'll be a corner. Let's look at this Brazilian corner then. Be taken by Alev Elton. Sierra Santos has come up from the from the back. And a good fist away by Flowers. Palinha tries to get it back into that goal mouth again, but that was an excellent piece of goalkeeper and a lot of pressure there by Tim Flowers in his first cap. Good punch away. I think it was Marcio Santos who was really getting up there to uh, hopefully nod that ball back for an equaliser for Brazil, but Flowers did well. Yeah, a lot of things have happened for him, haven't they? Um, you know, he hasn't had any, any miracle saves to make, but he's looked competent, he's looked alive, and he, he is like an infectious character, and I think that's transmitted its way through a little bit, and he's, he's had moments of good luck, i.e. the two chances in the first half when the Brazilian ads didn't connect. What we need to do now, Brian, if we can, and it's very, very difficult because they've really raised the game now, Brazil is in search of an equaliser, is just to try and get hold of the ball, put a few passes together, try and ease it into wide positions, and that's where people like Sharp have got a responsibility, to just try and carry the fight a little bit and take some of the pressure off the defence. Jorginho, as you say, they've raised the pace a bit, they've raised their game again, the Brazilians searching this equaliser, the heat in every sense is truly on out there in the RFK Stadium in Washington today. Dunga getting it wide towards Kafu. Kafu is such a dangerous looking player, Kareka tries to get it back to it, but again the English tackling and the English defending was of the highest order. Sinton gets away now, being chased by Rai, gets away from him, he's got right in the middle, can right finish it off? Can Sharp get in there and finish it off in the end? The Brazilians, great play there by Jorginho. Super football from both sides there as Cafu takes it up. As you say, magnificent defending by Jorginho. Almir, can he get away from Dorigo? Oh, he's given a free kick. I think that's a very, very sympathetic decision. So do I. Almir was trying to hold his strength against Dorigo, and Dorigo stays stronger bodily-wise than him. That'd be a tragedy if, say, if anything uh, drastic occurred on this. Jorginho with the free kick for Brazil. So come on, England, you need to defend sturdily here. Right across the face of that goal, the luck is still being ridden by England as Elivelton. Twist and turns, gets the better of Barrett. Well, if anything, that looked a foul, but he wasn't given that time. And England get it clear up towards Lee Sharp. I think it was Wright who played that ball across the field for him. And what about that for a cheeky back pass? <laughs> Jorginho, wonderful. He's had an excellent game, hasn't he? He's done the lot. He's defended brilliantly when he's had to, and he's probably been as, as an effective an attacker as Brazil have had. I mean, he's forced Lee Sharp back most of the game into virtually playing left side at the back. And here he is again on the ball. Plays for Bayern Munich in the German Bundesliga. Jorginho. Given away there. And given away there by Nigel Klaff Dunga. Finding Rai. Dunga again. England desperate to get it back again. Playing it in towards Kareka. And again, England get it away, and the break is on again. Andy Sinton, who's got right on the far side, didn't quite pick him up. Now he has. This is great stuff now. Yes, we're looking at proper international side, aren't we now? Sinton. Had an excellent game, Andy Sinton. Oh, and he's been down there by Dunga. Dunga realised just how dangerous Sinton was becoming, obviously. And Sinton has stayed down. Well, the referee has given nothing there at all. The game goes on, but it uh, looked to me uh, 
very late challenge there by Dunga on Sinton. Clough caught out a little bit there, but the ball comes through nonetheless. And in the end, it's David Platt who puts it away so just that Sinton can get a bit of treatment. Just watching there, Brian, about the inexperience of an international side. We all knew Sinton was down, and yet because we got possession, because they're probably enjoying the game to start passing it about until it finishes up with Platt and you know, he'll know from the Italian job. You stick it into touch and we buy a bit of time again and get treatment on for the lad. Graham Taylor, furious, I think, by that uh, refereeing decision there. 51,000 sellout here, the first time in the US Cup. 54,000. See also uh, highlights of USA against Germany at 12.40 on ITV tonight. You're saying that there reckon to be 100,000 people in America watching soccer today, which is, you know, that's got to be a welcome boost for the World Cup next year. I tell you, the, uh, the World Cup fever has really taken grip as well. Tickets went on sale here yesterday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for the matches here next season and also for the matches in Chicago. And within two hours, they were completely sold out for every match to be played in these two cities. And I'm told also it looks like being an absolute sellout when England play uh, Germany in Detroit next Saturday afternoon, which is again a match that you can watch live on ITV. I think it's at 7 o'clock in the evening, your time at home. So it's beginning to bubble a bit here in the States, and it's a good exhibition here as Ella Belton plays the ball through to Cafu as England still lead by a goal to nil. Ella Belton. Oh, he tricked his man well, he tricked Palmer well there, and he got a play from Barrett too, but the central defenders were there, Pallister, a corner then for Brazil. He's with... having one of those games today, isn't he, Pallister? He's timing his tackles well, he seems to be in the right place at the right time, and he's been a giant for the team. Rise in there, Careca's in there, Marcio Santos has come up again from the, from the back. It's an equaliser for Brazil, and Marcio Santos has made it 1-1. Well, the big defender, I told you, was coming up from the back. In the end, it was quite a simple little header for Marcio Santos. Beyond the despairing dive of Tim Flowers. I mean, it isn't even a good corner, is it? It's a half-hit one. Pallister doesn't quite get there, and then he sneaks in off the back of Carlton Palmer. Marcio Santos. De Riga almost cleared off the line, but from an England point of view, that was a sloppy goal. I mean, it wasn't a great corner. We've been caught, we've just been caught where guys run off the back of us. Jorginho. Something to celebrate now for the Brazilian fans. It's a little knot of them up on the top areas there in their yellow and green, uh, jumping up and down like dervishes at the moment. They're loving every moment of this. Marcio Santos having uh, pulled it back to 1-1. One -one. Sinking. Still now's the time for the team now to show its character. I mean, they... They've, they've had the sort of boost of, uh, of the goal. They've played, you know, that's kept them going for a little while. And all of a sudden, the position's changed somewhat. You've just got to show the character now and grind the way back into the game and not just go under. And the ironic thing about us, I mean, we talk about Brazilian magic and all that, and yet we've been beaten by a simple bread and butter goal that you'd see on virtually, virtually any lower division ground in the country in England. Free kick to England on the far side. Sharps across there with it. Floated in. Sinton with the throw. Sharp caught out there, but it'll be a free kick to England. 11 minutes to go. Taffarel coming for this. Oh, 
Walker. Hill Slope. Right. Dunga. Head of Elton. Capu. Adinho. Stop by Carlton Palmer. Playing his way out of trouble, finds Dorigo. Dorigo hitting a ball that just fell wide of Clough. They're making us hurry our passes a little bit, aren't they? When we have it at the back now, they're, they're building up pressure on us, just making us hurry our passes. And the goal kick. Back to uh, looking at this again. They, uh, she was saying it was Ellie Belton who uh, took the shot there. Let's hit this one early. Surprised is the element here. And knowing them, it's a wonder. You see, he's hit it off the outside of his left foot. Very often they can whip back in, keep leaving the keeper completely surprised. Paul yeah. Merson looks so he might be coming Yeah, this, I'm wondering about this, Brian. I'd like to see him on in a running role, either in place of Clough or, or even Sharp, who may be tiring somewhat. Somebody that can just pick the ball up and take it the distance of the field and take a little bit of pressure off our back people. You find at this moment, actually, Ron, with 10 minutes left, that the Brazilians might be very, very difficult to hold in these last 10 minutes. Yeah, we've got to be able to relieve it somehow. We've done well, we've stuck at our task. Um, all right, we've invited them back into the game with that, with that equaliser. Now we need to be able to take pressure off. Back to, the ball a bit. back to David Platt again. Then stopped by Dunga. Flick forward again. Celebelto. Up forward towards Palinho, but Walker showing that pace that returned to him there and uh, got it away to safety. You've seen that attack there, that's what we've got to be careful of. Earl Barrett had broke out from defence, but as soon as, as soon as we lost possession, they were able to exploit that gap. Palinho, Careca. No foul. Barrett gets it away up to Clough. Clough's pass doesn't reach his man. Kareka. Ooh, the little flick through there towards Ray. Oh, just wide from Palinha, but the whistle had gone in any case. Yeah, that's poetic. I mean, I, that would have been scandalous if that had been allowed to, to have stood. Um, because he, there was a definite foul there on Des Walker. Flowers with the kick. Merson waiting to come on. Yeah, Nigel Clough's coming off Barn, which that's not surprising. He's lost his way a little bit in, in this period of, that they've been on top of us. He's been smothered somewhat. So Clough comes off. Merson, who's had a real savage haircut. I'm, I gather he was saying at breakfast time this morning, Brian Moore will never recognise me with a haircut like this. Well, we recognise him, and what we want also to recognise now, one of those surging runs that come down the flanks from those midfield areas that he so often produces in a red shirt at Highbury. Looks as if he's going to operate at wide on the right-hand well, side. That means that's where I think he's often the most dangerous, don't Sinton you? will come in and we'll, they will narrow our three in midfield down a little bit. So, so we've virtually got five here, five there. Two wide and Sharp and Merson on the flanks. And then Platt, Palmer and uh, seemed to do the narrow job. Palmer did well there, supported here by Wright. Tries to pick up his Arsenal teammate Paul Merson on the far side. But that's where we've got to retain possession. I mean, he's, done, he's showed very well Ian Wright at times. He's come out of the play, been outnumbered, picked up good possession. And then sometimes he does try over ambitious football. Where, you know, midfield players on his own side like, him, like them to just link up with him. Right. And England hold on. Jorginho, crowd gets to his feet as the Brazilians attack again. Earl Barrett got a valuable header in there and a first touch, real first touch for Merson. Doesn't find Sinton with it and we've given the ball away in a difficult area again here from the English point of view. And Walker, I think it was, stretching out once again. The ball was given away again this time to Jorginho. Trying to get things going, <laughs> speeding things up with those slick little one-time passing movements on the edge of the English penalty area. Total vigilance now required by this English defence. Total concentration. Dorigo. Shook off the challenge of Giorgino. Hits it forward towards right, but he's away off the target. We saw the competitive side of the Brazilians there, didn't we, when uh, Dorigo 
Kit wins the first challenge and all of a sudden there's a second blue shirt piling in on top of him. Coming towards the last five minutes of the game, still standing at 1-1 here in the RFK Stadium in Washington. Kareka again. Malinia. Oh, the back heel. Kafu's in there. Shot charged down though by Lee Sharp. Or rather, it was uh, Merson who charged that one down. Isn't that that much of a haircut? <laughs> well, there. There he goes through. Exactly five minutes left. 1 1 we stand. Victory would have been wonderful, of course, but a draw would be uh, also an excellent result for England. Back Mo for England, Asia Santos. More to the Brazil. point, Brian, is the way we've played. Yeah, absolutely I mean, I think right. we've played with, uh, played with a fair amount of intelligence against a very good side. Hey, Belton. And that was going to bobble a bit unpleasantly for Flowers, about four or five yards ahead of him. It just kicked up a little bit, but the Southampton keeper was nicely behind it again. Yeah, that can sometimes be Just an ugly one, can't it? Just up a little bit. But I tell you what, Ron, we're giving the ball away far too often in that uh, last third of the, the field. I think in all fairness, you've got to say this from the Brazilian point of view. I mean, as I say, we, we look at uh, Brazilian football and think neat passing, lovely one-twos and all the flary stuff. But they can pressurise and they're, they're, they're working our defenders very, very hard. It's been a torrid test for our defenders in midfield today. And by and large, we've acquitted ourselves well. Carreca's little ball through, Walker stepping out of the rubble beautifully there. And a long ball, oh, and he was never offside. Never in a million years. Never in a million years was right, was right offside. Right for Brazil, the pressure back on England again. About three and a half minutes remaining. Dunga, a long range shot by him. Just wide of Flowers' goal and a goal kick. Well, it takes some pressure off uh, whatever happens now. It takes some pressure off Graham Taylor. I think it's been a performance. I mean, we've had better international sides than we've, than we've got out today that have uh, had problems with a team of this calibre. I mean, this is, I would guess this is the best team we've played for a long time. Certainly, I would say the far superior to, say, somebody like Norway. Absolutely right. And it makes you wonder if we'd have played with the same sort of... Same sort of pattern or whatever against Norway what might have happened. Dunga. Alinea. Oh, he's shaken off Carlton Palmer. Palmer's back for some more though. Platt was sturdily placed just on the edge of the box there to get it away and uh, Sinton was much too keen to have a little scrap with Dunga there. And lost the ball. Yeah, they should, at this stage we should be looking to get the ball either to Merson or Sharp to carry the fight for us. This could be dangerous. It's Rye and Ellie Belton on the far side. Gets his cross in towards Almir. And in the end it was Sharp who gets it away for another corner for Brazil. With two minutes left on the clock. England holding on to this 1-1 scoreline. And Brazil now looking increasingly dangerous. And Elton with the corner. Carreca's in there. Maria Santos is up again. He's done enough damage already. And just flicked away. I think it was probably Des Walker who uh, got the header in, although Platt has gone down. He's given another free kick to Brazil. Almir will take this one. Maria Santos again in there. It's Platt is still down and needs some treatment. Very important now with this with this sort of lull in the play that uh, the England lads don't lose concentration. Touch tight, everybody's got to be marking, everybody's got to be on the toes, and they've got you know we've just got to make sure they don't equal, don't get a winner from this from here. When the clock's gone past the post now, we're verge, we're, as you say, we're playing in injury no, time. No, no, we've got still on my clock at any rate. A minute. Oh yes. The stadium clock says we've gone past it. Mine I'm sticking with still... you. <laughs> if you say more, you've more experience than these. I'm big internationals. Well, David, that's all right again. 
There's the free kick. Floated in there. Flowers grab it with confidence. Well, I think all of us in the media tend to jump on the tabloid bandwagon and we're all slightly guilty of making it a bad time for Graham Taylor. Feed off there, but I think we have to hold our hands up today, all of us, and say he's turned it round to a certain extent and goodness knows where it goes from here. I mean, a good result against a good Brazilian side is a wonderful starting point for something else. But there's still a bit of work to be done. Let's hope we haven't spoken too soon. Jorginho. Cross comes in, it's a good one too, but behind for the goal kick. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's the manner we've achieved. We've stuck to the task. We've had to work extremely hard because they've set some great problems of the Brazilians. I mean, and we're now seeing them flowing again. I thought they lost a little bit of their game, you know, just after half time. But the last 20 minutes, they've been incessant. They're passing, passing they're probing, they're pushing on in the flank positions. And really, we're hanging on by the skin of our teeth. But we're hanging on because we show one of the one of the best English English qualities, and that's guts, isn't it? We've shown an awful amount of that today. Up goes right, but didn't get a touch. Dunga playing it wide for Jorginho. I think Tim Flowers at this stage, if he does get any more high, more balls to him, would be better to try and just keep the ball. With. He's hitting it long now, and that, that means the Brazilians are just winning everything. Good challenge by Platt there. Palmer, let's keep the ball now, England. Platt did well. Minute already played of injury time. Albert doesn't want to concede a corner. But Sharp, well, almost pulled to the ground there, actually. And the free kick's given inexplicably Brazil's way. I think he thought when, he, when the defender turned inside Sharp that Sharp obstructed him. I think that's, that's he's, let, he's let the Brazilians off the hook there a little bit. Well, it's been one of those better days today. Let's just hope England can hold on now for these last few minutes. But here's Jorginho for them. For Brazil, Walker did well. Jorginho again. Just bought a little bit of time. Good save by Flowers at the second time as well. That time from the number 20, Palinha. But it's been a lovely debut for Flowers, hasn't he? I mean, really, on another day, Palinha would have, would have played this well wide of him. He's just played it in nice, straight into his midriff. The full-time whistle, and England have got themselves a draw against Brazil. And a draw they thoroughly deserve, without any question at all in the heat here of Washington, when David Platt put them ahead, and then Marcia Santos with the equaliser for Brazil. But they match Brazil, maybe not for movement around the field and little individual touches of great skill, but for sheer determination. England have come back from the dead after so much had gone wrong for them in the last two or three weeks. And really can now, with their manager Graham Taylor, can hold their heads up after this one. Ron Atkinson? Yes, a, a very, very commendable performance. The best, the best English type of performance I've seen for a long, long time. Because they've certainly, they've had to face, they've had to face a top side. So there we are at the RFK Stadium here in Washington. The news has suddenly turned better. It's England 1, Brazil 1. Welcome back to the RFK Stadium here in Washington. The final score, England 1, Brazil 1. It's a lovely day here all of a sudden, an especially lovely day for the England manager, Graham Taylor. Here he is talking with Jim Rosenthal. Graham, you've gone from uh, what you described as your worst day in football to one of your best. No, oh, it's a very good performance. They've done very, very well. You know yourself, 76, 77 degrees against an excellent side. I mean, we all know, technically very, very equipped. We're not having really the breaks at the moment. Having made the change, we needed Incy not to get a, a, a little knock there and we had to bring him off because we missed him then in the middle of the pitch. And uh, it's those little breaks at the moment that aren't quite going for us. There'll be a lot of people back home who might be saying after this, hey, we've got a side here after all. I think we've always had a side. 
But you must have been gratified by what they did here today against a world superpower, yeah, Graham. They've played very well, we've looked at it. This is the kind of things that you get in, in, in world tournaments, European tournaments. It's that type of football. It's not a September evening at Wembley where you've got to get after the opposition. And it's been great experience. That's one of the reasons that we're in this tournament and they've done very, very well. I'm very pleased with them. Thanks very much indeed, Graham. Thanks a lot, Tom. I bet he's very pleased, Rodney Marsh, and yeah. so he ought to be. Yeah, he's like a one-man scoring machine, isn't he, David Platt? Um, scores a goal, he comes in, two minutes into the game, he's, and he scores another, another goal for England, and uh, marvellous performance all around. Uh, we're at pains to stress here that that was a tactical substitution, David Platt, for Batty, and it worked, didn't it? We said at half-time when we, made, we heard the, the change, what a good decision it was. And it came from a corner, recognised it very early, goes out to Simpson, who crosses the ball, and Platt puts Tafarel under the only pressure that he was under all the game, and I, I believe this is extremely poor goalkeeping. Well, it couldn't be perfect, could it, because they came back and uh, got one against us. It was a good header, and uh, really, Flowers was unlucky. Well, for 17 minutes, I thought we were, we were the better team. And uh, in the last 20 minutes, they started to dominate. Uh, Flowers was a little bit unlucky there, but I feel as Ron Atkinson said, it was a little bit of a sloppy goal from an in-swinging corner. Yeah, I said it was a good header. It wasn't, was it? <laughs> it wasn't particularly a good header, was it? Tim Flowers, what a debut for him. Oh, smashing. He's a, you know, a fine young man. Uh, his debut for England against Brazil. He'll be very, very happy with himself. And, uh, well, what about any, any other stars you pick up? Earl Barrett had the, a good well, game, I'd say. Well, personally, I thought England, for the, as, as David Platt said, for the first 70 minutes, we played as well today as we played poorly against America. Uh, I thought Walker and Pallister were absolutely outstanding in the middle of the defence. Um, Ince in midfield, Sinton did well, right up front. I thought it was a terrific England performance. Never mind the team, people have been criticising the manager. What difference will it make to his life? Well, I thought it was a little bit unlucky because um, England could have easily have won 1-0 and uh, if they had it done, everybody would have been saying, Graham Taylor's doing great. I know, I know, I know. Well then, we can look forward to Germany. That's the game in the Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah. Your thoughts on that 